Hey everyone, I'm Eric, this is my wife Julie, and we are The Blended Life. Hey you guys, tonight we're talking about jealousy and how you might be jealous of your ex or how you might be jealous of your spouse's ex, but we're going to talk about that and we're also going to give you tips and tricks on how you can overcome the jealousy. We're going to get a little goofy tonight too. <laughs> Enjoy. Hey, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Blended Life. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I've had people reach out and I'm so excited that we are coming out with new episodes every week and just can't wait for the next one. So I just want to start off by saying thank you yeah, to everyone thanks, you guys. for that's, that's listening. Fun. Yeah, it's like, encouraging to be like, people care. <laughs> <laughs> you had a post it, stick to yourself. It was just funny. I did? Yeah. Where'd it go? It's on the floor now. Yeah. Who needs it anyways? <laughs> you, <laughs> Eric's, this is going to be rough for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, because we're going to talk about exes again, we always seem, it seems just to be a well, never-ending. It's, it's a very big staple they to just won't a go away. family. Is staple the right word? What a sad word to use for our exes. A staple. Why? Uh, we're, con- we're connected to them, you know? Like, it's connect- yeah. It's a. it literally is a staple of a blended family. Like, you're going to most likely have an ex. In Mm -hmm. a blended family, you know, and it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, and I love, so this is a good plug. I'm going to plug right now. Oops, I just changed the phone over to something. I don't know how. But um, (laughs) Grace-Filled Step Parenting by Lori Short. It's the read-along we're doing. Um, Every Sunday, I go on Instagram Live at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, We're in week three right now, Um, so this is the midpoint of the book, and we're going to discuss chapters um, four and, wait, five and six? I don't know. One, two, three, four. (laughs) We're we're doing chapters five Five and and six. six. Yeah, even I know that. I'm not even in the study. Um, So yeah, we go and discuss two chapters a week, and so this week's five through six, but she talks about the X, and one thing that she says is that you have to make space for them. Right. And that it's really your choice of how you're going to, because it's just a fact they're there. You not liking them, you being jealous of them, whatever doesn't change the fact that they're present. No, if anything, it actually, if you don't accept it and make the space for them, it's actually going to make it harder. It's going to, it's going to complicate things and make it more difficult. And, what a crappy thing to have to deal with, but it's just reality, right? Yeah. So she talks about either you can put a welcome mat at your door yeah. step or you can barricade your door. It doesn't really, I mean, but it doesn't mean that. What about booby traps? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But still, wait, am I? You're not kidding. Uh-oh. Um, But anyway, so jealousy that surrounds the exes. And what we, when Eric and I were discussing this topic, It was interesting because you're like, wait, how are we addressing this? Is this um, the bio parent being jealous of their own ex or is this the spouse being jealous, like the step parent being jealous of the spouse's ex? And I'm like, both. Yeah. I think both happen. Right. I think that either you're jealous of your ex or you're jealous of your spouse's ex, but there always seems to be a reason for this. And so... What we thought we would do in the first part of this episode is talk about the different ways that jealousy might rear its ugly head in regards to the ex, no matter if you're a bio parent, the step parent, whatever role you play. So the first thing you actually came up with was lifestyle and money. Yeah. So talk about that. I feel like. I feel like money is always such a big part of every blended family, ex situation, divorce. You always hear about divorce and it's always like money related, you know, 
child support, uh, alimony. Um, you Who's know. responsible for paying for what? Are we splitting bills? Are you am, are you going to pay for everything, no matter if I'm making more than you? Yeah, Whatever. it just it always it it. I think it's one thing that it's it's always going to be there, like finances. And it's just, it's part of it, you know? And I think that there's a lot of room, you know, especially a family that starts out um, a lot of times, you know, either mom's making money, dad's making money. A lot of times it's just not even, it's not even playing fields. And they are, one's the breadwinner and the other yep. one's kind of raising kids or, um, you know, one works a little bit while the other one has a career. It's usually just not very even. So when it comes to a blended family, usually all the different players on the player field are not on the game board. We're going to call it a game board. Oh, game board. <laughs> yeah, <it's the laughs> He's really tired, you guys. The, <laughs> I don't even know what's It's the blended happen. family game board. Yeah. <laughs> usually all the players on the blended family game board uh -huh. are not even. And yeah. that leaves a lot of room for scrutiny. Yeah, and jealousy because you see the ex, whether it is your own ex or your spouse's ex, but maybe living a lifestyle that you think they shouldn't be living Yeah. or you wish you could be living. And there's a word that always comes to mind when I think of this is like Disneyland dad. Yeah. You know, well, you know what? Or, or the other one where you know that the other one doesn't make that much, but, it, and you hear it like celebrity superstars, athletes, and it's like all of a sudden you're paying, it's usually baby mama, you're paying someone to now live a lavish lifestyle off of your money, and that could be a really hard place too. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't, we don't deal with that at all, um, but I just, I see it always being, like a key point of interest, uh, you know, on stuff like this. Yeah, and I think the kids, too. I think jealousy rears its ugly head in this situation as a parent or a step-parent because you might feel jealous that the kids want to go be with the ex because they provide a lifestyle or yeah. do the Disneyland dad yeah. thing or can afford better clothes, better gaming systems, better or maybe or you know. maybe it's not even a, an affording thing. Maybe they live a different lifestyle of living off of alimony or living off of child support or living off mm -hmm. the government and they have a lot more time. Going on vacations and, and right. Yeah. Or maybe you know having better food in the house. Like that's even a thing or for they, kids uh, especially, right. right? Or they just live differently where they just have Mm -hmm. No responsibilities in life and everything is just a giant yeah. fun factory and yeah. no regard for anything. Well, you know? and it's also parenting, like a lifestyle for the kids as far as like the kids don't want to be with you because at mom's house, there's no real boundaries or rules. Right. So I get away with way more there because that lifestyle is just an easier path and a funner path. It has nothing to do with money. Way more funner way path. Way more funner path. Yes. Than having to be in our home. And I think that that can make jealousy happen as far as you're jealous that the kids want to be there with the ex over being with you. And this is and this is a real big reason why I have a hard time with child support and alimony. <laughs> and I know I know I am one of a few and, and sometimes alimony and child support are just absolutely needed. But a lot of times like unemployment, it's very abused too. And and the system isn't good, <laughs> at least here in California. It is not a good system. No, it's just a computer and that spits out numbers. That's yeah. it. And it's based off of nothing. Takes no nothing it's, into it's, account <laughs> but like no, numbers. It's just a broken system. So part of my rant for that is, um, and you guys can agree with me or not, it's just something I've seen. I don't mind supporting my kid. I don't mind supporting kids that aren't my kids I don't I don't mind helping other people and doing other things and I'm I'm good with that I'm good with like giving like giving that's not a problem to me right what's a problem to me is that we are living in a society of everyone's equal and everyone wins and everyone gets a gold star and uh, we actually almost quit youth or did we we almost quit youth hockey 
with my son because at the they stopped keeping track of scoring. Of scoring. <laughs> so ridiculous. And all the kids basically at the end would win. would win. And it was just like that's not the real world. We are mm-hmm. raising these kids that are just going to be soft if they don't win and, and if entitled. They, Enti- like I should uh, yes. win. I should win because I'm here. I should win yes. because I showed up. I should win because I should have alimony because it's a sweet thought, you know. It's yeah. a very, you know, from the outside in it is a very sweet thought. Like I get it. I get the thought process and I'm like, "All right, like that is that's a nice thing." It's sweet. It's a sweet thing. But it's a soft thing. But it's a soft thing and it's not true. So so coming back to the child support and alimony, I think in my opinion, it's a good thing for kids to see different lifestyles, mm-hmm. and I think I've talked about this you've, a while yes, back. You said this a lot, like a it's, lot. It's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a yeah. theory of mine. I'm like, kids need to see what happens when you know mom works her tail off or dad works his tail off, and he saves money and he lives a certain way, and you know, and the other family does it a different way. They can see both sides of this, and I see mm. you getting a little worked up. And what, mm. what do we got going? Wonder, like, do I just th- don't even know if I could talk about I'll tell you off air. Oh, no. Yeah. No, but here's the thing. Let's tell like, it to Blended Life Raw. We'll tell it to Blended Life if Raw. But what if know- there's a situation, for instance, that there is no alimony and child support in place? Okay. Okay. Yep. And you're right. Like, um, mom works really hard. Yeah. And so mom, mom is not responsible for anything paying for the kids at yep. all. Doesn't pay anything for the kids, not court ordered to, you know, and mom works really hard and mom gets all these toys in the house. And so the kids, <laughs> kind of? so mom has like a house that she bought and a trailer and multiple cars and they go on, like I go, you know, mom goes on vacations and all these things. But, and so kids see that, yes, this hard work and effort leads to a really great life. Mm-hmm. But kids don't know that that money is being used for those things, but not for that. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, it's not. It's not actually going there's to no, someone else's support. There's there is a wizard there, behind the curtain. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I feel like that a lot so of people. So that can is like a jealousy thing too. Like, yeah, you might work hard and have all this stuff, but you're not yeah. paying for your own children. Right. Someone else's. Right. But. And that could be a way jealousy shows up in the money world where it's like you get to just have all this stuff, but you don't get to support your own children. Yeah. You want somebody else to do that for you so you can afford all this other stuff. Anyway. Completely. And, but so this conversation, this part of it, the, the financial part of it is such a rabbit hole though, because there's so many, you just keep going down this thing and there's so many different paths that you can take and there's so many different scenarios a lot like a blended family i mean there's a (laughs) lot of scenarios that are involved in this and yeah and i'm sure everyone has their own situation and thoughts on all this type of stuff you know and sometimes you know the alimony and the and the child support is a very necessary thing absolutely you know there are people out there who's like dedicated their whole lives to raising these kids and are blindsided with an affair yes and now it's like i have to to the curb and but i don't have a job or a career or a degree because that's not the deal we made when we got married right i never finished college or i never pursued that i don't have a skill that i I went to trade school that i can provide so i can go get a 15 dollar an hour job but in california is that going to provide for a single household no not no not when we were no. living off, well, there we are, you guys. But Not when we were living off a doctor or a lawyer's salary, and now everything has just turned upside down, and I'm stuck here. And I had no, I had no part in that or say. Like, yeah. yes, I mean, yeah. of course, there's a, there's a lot. There's a so, lot, but okay. that's part of the rabbit hole. So there are so many things, different ways this could. Yeah, go. and I think that's just it, that is also a very good thing. Of um, you know, you've talked about your mom teaching this to look at everything from both sides. All sides but that is a very good lesson when it comes to blended families try to put yourself in everyone's shoes try to slow up and not make judgment on situations or the other people because a lot of times a situation at the other household looks so different when the kids come home and they tell you about it and 
it's just not the way it actually is. It's mm-hmm. perceived completely different. Yeah. And that is just, if we can all just slow down, look at things from all sides, and extend a little grace. Yeah. I feel like blended life will get a little bit easier. 100%. That's really great advice. Thanks. I came up with it myself. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Just kidding. <I> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so another way jealousy can rear its ugly head in regards to the ex, whether it's yours or your spouse's, is that the ex may have a connection that you with the kids, whether they're your biological kids or your stepchildren, the ex might have a connection that you are jealous of, that you wish you had, that you feel that you're insecure about your own connection with your kids or you see the kids connecting on a level that you're like, why don't they connect with me the same way? What's it about that ex that is so great? And I think that this is something that, like I said, whether you're the bio parent or the step parent, jealousy exists there. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's a connection with kids. Well, and it's something we've been learning about too is that kids connect with different parents at different times in their life. And that can leave a lot of room for jealousy because if you're a kid who you've always been so close to is now connecting or, or pushing away from you, you know, to connect or not connect with someone else, or, um, they've always just gone through this, you know, time in their life where they've always connected to stepmom or stepdad. And, um, you've never really just had that connection with them. That can hurt because, yeah. I pushed you out of my hoo ha, and I have <laughs> you did breastfed you, you and did? I had I did all of this for you. Thank and you. And you just don't really appreciate me. No, because I got no milk out of your breasts. So it was very <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> Keep milking, Falker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Such a good movie. you're right. Like you feel entitled to a connection, or if you're the step parent and you're like, I try so hard, I try so hard. I try so hard, you know, and you feel like. And got so far, but in the end. I don't know what you're talking about. It didn't really matter. (laughs) Is this another song that. (laughs) (laughs) Come on. If you guys know the song, comment. I probably do. It's just your singing skills. You have to know that song. That was not a singing skill. It wasn't. I don't get it. Anyways. Moving on. People know the song. Someone's like, yes, I know that song. So another way jealousy can come up both ways, your ex or... Hey, jealousy. Hey, jealousy, yes. Okay, so (laughs) another way it can come up in your family life and then come up within you, whether it's your ex or your spouse's, is that the perception that the other house is better, the other home environment is better than what you're providing. And it kind of goes to the same with the lifestyle and money, but like... Maybe the connections with the other kids are better in the other home. Like the ex is providing a spouse that is more welcomed by your child than the spouse you picked for your child. Okay. Yeah. There, that the home is a better environment. I guess we already talked about that. But like the relationships in the home are stronger, better. You know, there's more nurturing in that home or there's more discipline in that home or the actual physical home is better. Okay. You know, it's yeah. in a better neighborhood. The kids would rather be there because they feel more safe and secure for some reason. Or they reason. have their own space in that home where they don't necessarily they don't have to share rooms home. Yeah. in that home. And so I think that that really brings up jealousy where you're looking at the other home and you're feeling like it's better than yours on a bunch of different levels. What would levels. you call that like in the blended life family? Would you call that keeping up with the Brady's? You know, like in in the in the real world, everyone calls it like keeping up. Well, I guess nowadays it's keeping up with the Kardashians. You know, which is no just, one can you keep know, up with them. No one, ain't nobody, <laughs> ain't nobody running for governor around here. <laughs> okay, he's dying. Him. Okay. Oh. Anyway, um, so there's that. There's also there's two more, but that we wrote down, but. It's more having to do with you being jealous of your spouse's ex. Yeah, I could see that. So these two kind of are are especially for the step parent in the situation. But sometimes you can be jealous that your spouse has such a intimate past with another person that's not you. 
So um, that maybe you're not having children together, okay. but that your spouse had that experience of like pregnancy and childbirth and staying up all night. And that was, that's a really intimate experience. And you may not share that experience with your spouse, but knowing that they had that with their ex. As a matter of fact, I don't share that with you. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> right. We, yes. Yes. <laughs> but I'm saying <laughs> that it can be a point of content. Like, like um, it's hard to imagine your spouse being intimate with their ex. Oh, interesting. You know what um, I mean? Yeah, or I, like, hmm. you know, your spouse, I don't know, shared memories, have shared experiences. You know, this can come up a lot, too, when you're with the in-laws, and the in-laws are always bringing up memories. <laughs> old memories, and it's like, wait, no, that wasn't you. That was Tommy. <laughs> old memories, old stories, or, you know, like we've talked about on the podcast before where there's, like, old trinkets of the ex and their life together in your home or old pictures or artwork or uh, memorabilia, and that can trigger jealousy feelings because – right. Your, your spouse had a whole other life and a whole other set of experiences equally intimate to what you're sharing in the marriage sense. Like yeah, they were married yeah, that's, before. Uh, that's one of those things, though. I think that all of us going into blended life or, you know, blended families should you know be it's very aware of, yet it, it's something that can catch you off. It's a Well, you know it, like logically you know, right. but usually the heart, and the mind are in such disconnect. Like whether and you the, the penis. And the penis. Yes. What about the vagina? <laughs> I mean, it does its own thing. <laughs> it just hangs out. <laughs> what? Laughs in the wind. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what kind of podcast are we doing here? So here's the deal though. Even though you know logically, yes, I obviously know I have stepkids. This husband of mine or wife of mine has been with another person and procreated and all the things. Like sometimes logically it doesn't prepare your heart for triggering emotions that come up of like right. jealousy a little bit like how know? about how about this one how about when you're talking to someone and um you refer to your current spouse as your ex spouse what no I, in, uh, during I, sex you no, say no 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 what is no. happening no, no, on no like, i am not okay, that's not at that, all that isn't something that's not at all where i'm going with it oh. no but you're like um for instance and, and i this is let's only say example. your ex-wife's name was sally okay so and i'm like and i'm julie hi julie nice to meet you my ex-wife's name is sally yes. and i'm talking <laughs> to you know a buddy on the phone and i'm like oh yeah hang on well um, yeah, we could probably, you know, come to the barbecue, but I need to check in with Sally real quick. Oh, I mean, Humpty Frump. So, you know what I mean? So you slip up, but it, but <laughs> I'm just saying, so could that create jealousy? That could, right? No, that's just creating rage and anger. Ooh, okay. That's like not jealous, not jealousy. And that's the like, reason you're a moron. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> my husband's an idiot. Yeah, but have you ever called, like, one of your friends? <laughs> I'm not even saying. What if it's the wife that does it? Because I'm. I'm like, I no, have heard, I have heard you I've refer. I've called the dog Annabelle before, that's my a, daughter. <laughs> so my wife's an idiot. But that's exactly. That's, so that's funny. the exact. Because you did that the other day. And yeah, because exactly, I was so annoyed. <laughs> yes. You I'm like, yeah. Annabelle. Oh, puck, I mean. Yes, you did that on our <laughs> I bed, I think. On the couch. Was it the couch? Last night. It was last night, though. I know it was last <laughs> night. And that's exactly what made me think of it because I'm like, it can happen so easily, especially but when. But to be fair, the dogs are like our children. <laughs> so they're all equal. <laughs> all equal doggies. No, so. I don't think. It, I mean, that would be, that would create other issues. You don't. Okay. But, but see, yeah, you could see like, why is he thinking about his ex right now? Yeah. But maybe you just got done co-parenting with them all day and you just all like, day? I've, and I've talked to them, oh. you know, and, and they, or they were the last person. Is this? I don't It's co It's co-parenting. Sometimes it just, it's an all day, all day thing. I feel like you were co-parenting with your ex all day today. Were you not? You know, this and then, morning. yeah, and then, but then we, you know, we talked about it at dinner and it's like, it's, it's part of it, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So my point is if it, you know, it's out of place of mistake, <laughs> but now it like, does that create jealousy? I mean, I, yes, uh, it creates other feelings, but I, I could, I yeah. mean, why not? 
why are you thinking about her? Why are you thinking about Could him? Could you imagine, though, saying your ex's name during sex? No, that's why you just... This is why you say nothing during that's sex. That's why you say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh we do gosh. not talk. Oh my god! For gosh. fear that's of what will come out of our mouths. Oh, oh, and you have to do like the small arm movements. <laughs> Is that during sex? Uh, yeah, it's from it's from an old I'm movie. D- <laughs> Clearly, that's not the way. Do you guys, do if it anyone, anymore. yes, if anyone's a true <laughs> South Park. Oh, you know, fan yeah, like me. Orgasmo is such a funny movie, and I know you won't watch it just because of the name of the title. You'll drop the f bomb on our family podcast, but you won't watch Orgasmo. This is not a family. Okay, first of all, oh. let's clear this up. Okay, this podcast is intended for mature audience. <laughs> 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 This podcast, I would hope kids don't listen no, to no, it. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean I'm by like, no, this is that's not what I mean by a family podcast. What do you but it's mean about by family. family? It's a, it, it's to help us grow. It's a real and it is but it's real. real. It's real. Sorry. Julie's mouth is real. No, this is You don't like get a different bring, version of me outside of this room. Well, I will never get a different version of you. You will never so. get the version of me. <laughs> Ever. (laughs) Jealousy kicks in. Somebody else took that. Are you jealous? Yeah. You're not at all. (laughs) I yelled at the dog about it the other night, but he didn't seem to care. Um, Okay. So I think that jealousy and competition go hand in hand, right? Like when we feel like we are in competition with the ex on some level, whether it's the connecting of like we're in competition financially, we're in competition with our lifestyles, we're in competition mm-hmm. for the affection and love of the children, right. we're in competition for attention w- from our spouse, right? Like mm-hmm. if your spouse is engaged with the ex all day long, but he hasn't talked to you at all, that might create jealousy. There you go, yeah. Of competition, right? Right. If he's shouting her name during intimate moments. Then we got bigger problems. <sighs> You know, I think maybe that jealousy is created out of insecurity that um, in the early parts. And I, think I'm, you le- I think you could have just left it there. I think jealousy is quite often created out of insecurities. Absolutely. Yeah. Insecurities that you're not enough, you're not worthy, you're there not you lovable. Be and Julie again, dragging <laughs> on the conversation longer than it needs to be. We could have left it there. Converse, uh, it, jealousy is completely... That was really rude. <laughs> I know. But it was one of those things that we talked about the other day, and it was really silly. Anyways, I apologize. I'm apologizing on the air, and I am walking it back. I'm going to start calling you my <laughs> ex's name. <laughs> Do what I dare you. I will laugh. Okay. We'll try it later. Right. I'll let you know. Social experiment. Well, we'll report back. <laughs> <laughs> Blended life raw. <laughs> um. So let's talk about then how we overcome <laughs> jealousy. <laughs> How? Why are you laughing? Because I'm thinking well, of a meme me I ask, watched the other day. What is it? Nothing. Oh, nothing fun. You just had a laugh. No, about it was it hilarious. And then not talk it, it's about hilarious. It. It's Kamala Harris telling <laughs> everyone not to come. Do not come. Oh, Do yeah, not come. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, President Trump shows up and he goes, I'm going to come. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone just immediately starts cheering. Ah! And then at the end of it, he's like, oh, <laughs> like a moan at it, too. It's just like, it doesn't matter if you're left, right, straight from another country. It doesn't matter where you are. It's hilarious. It's funny. I it's do hilarious. know that. It yes. was really, really funny. Thank okay. Um, One for me. <laughs> <laughs> you're now up to zero. I am now. You were at negative, and now yeah. you're just back up. I'm just kidding. Um, have you ever been jealous of I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, but you're asking. You don't the wrong ever person. get jealous I'm of just, me I at all. Know. <laughs> I don't know whether to be that's not that's let's not stop the very. conversation here. I like zero where I'm at. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, but like do you ever experience jealousy that you can think about? I um, have for sure. You have I, uh-huh. I mean you do spend a lot of time and give a lot of attention to the dogs, <laughs> way more than me. But I no, I'm not I'm not a big you don't get guy. jealous. No, at because all. I really I do. I slow down and I look at the situations and I realize like you are with me because you want to be with me because you choose to be with me. And if you don't want to be with me, that's not my choice. That's not my doing. That's going to be on you. So I at the end of the day, I have no control over that. And I think a lot of that comes from my divorce and the way that my divorce went down and everything that happened. And at the end of it, I just had to surrender my life to God and be like, you know what? I don't have full control over my life like I think I do. 
I don't have control over my wife, over ultimately at the in the end, my children, you know, my parents, my um, workers and coworkers and people around me, my friends, my friendships. At the end of the day, I'm only in control of myself and what I do and my actions. So if me being jealous is going to dictate how I live my life, it's all that's almost like a it's almost like a a drug, if you will, you know, it's, it's a dependent thing that makes you feel a certain way. And at the end of the day, it's not really a good thing for you. And and I know that's easier said than done. Have I ever been jealous? Oh yeah. I've always, I, you know, I've, ha- I've, I've, I've never experienced I've had, a side of you ever. No, but it's because it's something that I have had to learn. And as you know, you've only been with me, I don't know what, a third of my life. Uh, no, sorry. One fourth of my life. I forget how old we are. I only know how old you are these days. Really rude. Anyways. I'm gonna go home and play with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will never get that virgin of Julie. <laughs> um, okay, so then you don't uh, well, you have so you've experienced jealousy though. So you, oh, yeah. you know Who how hasn't? to get over it. Well yeah. I don't know. I d I don't I, know I'm, the I'm, side I'm, of you, so I wonder. I'm like, yeah, you, are you, you not jealous of me because I'm not like, I don't nothing. care? You're like, no. if somebody came and took nope. me away, you'd be like, nope. cool, nope. bye. It has nothing to do. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, love. Not everything has to do with you. It does. <laughs> You're not that special. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he keeps telling me I'm not that special. I don't know how to no. take that. It's it's not. Par I mean, for the course. I've had, no, I've definitely had jealousy. And, but you know what? I've also let jealousy... Um, ruin relationships in the past, you know, the dating relationships. And um, maybe it didn't ruin them, but I feel like it played a part. I feel like it tainted them a little bit. Yeah. When like I was it, younger, I'm like, mm-hmm. that was a very unnecessary way to feel why I was feeling that when I was feeling that, you know, when it's in its adolescence, it's part of being a child and growing up and learning all the feelings. I mean, you know, I, I, when I was young, I used to cry when I got hurt too. Now, if I fall and I skin my knee, I don't cry because you just, you learn You're to You're devoid work. of emotion other than anger? <sighs> you get angry. I see that side of you a whole I lot. Have, hey, I'm also. still, I'm not as old as you. I'm still working up to getting better at life. I apologize. <laughs> Negative one. <laughs> Negative 20. Oh, Negative 40. <laughs> what? Negative 92. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so let's talk about how we, how if you're dealing with jealousy, especially with the ex on I'm any the wrong level. person for this. No, you've learned how to get over it. That's true. So you're the perfect person for oh. this. But Did you just call me perfect? Yeah. You call me You really are doing air. so amazing tonight. I was really worried about well, how this was going to play out, but you are bringing it. Not to like make this a total fluffing sesh, but... Um, Going back to your book the other day, I was actually listening to you. Um, I was I was shooting a house, but I was in the middle of something. I call it. It's called. I don't call it. It's called Matterporting. It's like a three D virtual tour system, and I got a lot of time. So I, I was sitting there and I chimed into you doing your um, book club, <laughs> if you will, read along, your read along with everyone else, mm-hmm. and it was really good. It, you did a really good job, and. Um, I feel like you need to know that. I feel like our listeners need to know that. Mm -hmm. And um, if they're hesitant about doing this read along, um, there's a lot of insight that comes from it. There's a lot. It's not just like we read and then we laugh a little bit and then we're done. Like there's a lot of thought that goes into it and just, you do a good job. You should be a health and life coach. Okay. <laughs> I, w- I think I'll do that. Oh, boom. <laughs> there we done. are. Done. Yeah. And done. And which also you're killing Thank it you. at. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I just, a little shameless plug, want to let people know that you are, and most people know, a blended family health and life coach and do sessions. And if pe- the feedback so far of people who've been through your program has just been incredible and the transformation that they've received from you and the work. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So I don't want that to go unnoticed on this podcast because these are the people that fuel stuff like that. And, and our audience is the type of people that you connect best with. So. Yeah. Thanks. Of course. Shucks. Okay. Oh, shucks. Oh, she shucks. says, Oh, shucks. Um, I appreciate <laughs> that. And I love, I love coaching people because um, not only is it, a really fulfilling and rewar- rewarding career, 
um, which I never thought I would have. Like genuinely, mm-hmm. I get to help people. Yeah. Um, and connect with people. Mm-hmm. Yes, but something selfishly I love is it inspires me to be better. Also, like I can't teach and and challenge and stretch people if I'm not willing to go there myself. So it makes me like as my clients level up, I kind of feel like I got to make sure I'm there with them. And it's pretty neat to um, be inspired by my clients as much as I hope they're inspired by me. Yeah. So anyways, so well, if people are interested, I'm just going to let them know. Yeah. How do they how do they reach you? Um, You can email me on or you can message me on any of our platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, but eventually I'll just need your email address and then I can email you, um, information about coaching if you're interested. And it doesn't have to be coaching on blended family stuff. Um, it could be coaching on any life issues you're having or health issues. So, um, reach out and let me know. I'd love to talk. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Of course. Okay. What do we do with jealousy? We have it. We feel it. We feel, cause when you're in that rabbit hole of jealousy, it's all consuming, And it really changes how you show up in your family. If you're showing up as a jealous person in your marriage, Mm -hmm. that's no fun to receive. No, that's not affects your marriage. It taints things. It taints your relationship with your kids. You know how many times we've said taint already? (laughs) (laughs) And it also is really, you know, if you're showing up in your co parenting jealous, it makes it harder to co parent, which it makes it harder on you and really the kids suffer. So it's really important to get a hold on jealousy if you're if you're experiencing it. And here's what I want to say about jealousy. Jealousy comes from insecurity mostly. And if you want to dig deeper, and this is such a coaching thing, what need in you is crying out to be met? Because see, anger, jealousy, they're like second, third hand emotions. Meaning there's layers deep underneath, like something else is going on to create this emotion, this reaction, this mindset, but it's not even jealousy. It's something much deeper. So um, that's just a little coaching tidbit. Like you said, it's a second hand emotion. (laughs) But I think the biggest cure for jealousy is gratitude. Yeah. So when you find yourself being jealous... The first thing you can do to flip the switch in your mind is think of the things you are grateful for. Maybe you're grateful that the ex lives close by and the kids get to have a relationship with them because that's in their best interest. Maybe you're grateful that the ex chose a spouse that doesn't beat your kids or is mean to your kids. Maybe you're really grateful that you have a home and a family and um, good food in your belly every night. Maybe you're just grateful for being a mom or a stepmom. Maybe you're really grateful you found a spouse to do life with and you're not on your own. There's Maybe so you're much really you grateful can be grateful that for. you're not thinking about your ex all the time because you have too much going on in your own family that you just don't care what goes on in the other family. Like there's so, 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 so much to be grateful for. Yeah. You know, if we just, we stop and look around, you know, a lot of people have it, probably harder than we do, you know, and if not here, you know, it's like that saying, like there's always going to be someone bigger, better and stronger or there's always someone who's going to have more, have more and be funnier. That's it. Than you. But if you're someone like you and your half is your glass is half empty, there's always going to be someone that is doing worse than you and has it worse than you. And it just, you know what I mean? (laughs) So. You're so, you're you can, like at a negative 152 now. That's all right. I am digging this hole to China. Yeah. yeah I'm We're going to have to do some deep work when yeah. we get home. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's that attitude of gratitude that you can bring because you cannot be grateful and jealous at the same time. Like if you're genuinely grateful, you can't be jealous at that exact moment. And so it's a really good way to shift perspective and mindset and get that, um, train that jealousy out of you. Every time you start to feel jealous, make sure you're filling your heart and mind with what you're grateful for. Another thing you can do is let assumptions be what they are. A lot of our jealousy 
comes from assuming things and we don't actually know what's going on. As much as I'm jealous sometimes of what happens maybe in my ex's home, do I live in that home? No, and that's do what I, I was, that's go what I was, there? That's what I was getting at earlier. Yeah. It's like a lot of times you take things, you know, they per, uh, the perspective looks a lot different. It's Social media is a highlight a reel. 100%. <laughs> you don't know what yeah. happens behind closed right. doors. Yes. Right. So. And so assumptions, I wrote this down so I want to read it because I think it's good. Assumptions are lies we tell ourselves to prove what we believe to be true. 100%. So. Did you make that up yourself? Yeah. Wow. You are so insightful. Again, you should be a health and life coach. Thanks. But, you know, it's something that, you know, we have uh, beliefs that are based on lies. And then we look for evidence to prove our beliefs are true because if our beliefs aren't true, that makes us very anxious. Yeah, but man, whether there are beliefs are righteous or not, no. you know what I mean? But man, what a bunch of wasted time <clears throat> and energy. You know, if you add up all that, if you live in that type of, it's an insecurity, right? If you yeah. live in that realm, yeah, like that's so much wasted energy that could go towards that career you've always wanted that makes you yeah. happy or your kids that are crying out for the love and attention of you, you know, if we can take that energy and turn it into something else, yeah, you know, and, and turn it into a positive thing and fill that glass right back up. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get off. I, I had to. I don't know. But let's talk about assumptions <sighs> when it comes to, so, so this is a, another thing, assumptions with the ex, but also assumptions is the number one reason why communication and marriage fails. We yeah. assume right. what isn't being said. You know, we assume our spouse feels a certain way. We assume our spouse thinks a certain way. We assume our spouse our spouse feels or think about the thinks about their ex in a certain way. Do we? And so we no. <laughs> but yet. I'm saying like, you know, assumptions and communication create breaks in connection right. that are really difficult. And so um, even when you're co-parenting, don't assume, right? If you have a co-parenting relationship that's really difficult, take things as facts. Like figure out what the facts are. What do I know? And base your, base your response and feelings on that instead of like trying to fill in the blanks with assumptions that you don't really know about. Well, and especially when it's an assumption from information you've only received from a kid you know, or, or, or from social media that you've only seen from the highlight reel, you're drawing up these assumptions, conclusions, yep, yep. all of it. And you're like, I know that they're doing this. I know they're talking about me this way. They're blah, 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 all the things. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, is that really, really, really what's going on? And it might be, but there's a good chance it's not right. Yeah. And I, so the next thing you can do to combat jealousy when it comes to the ex is something you were getting to before is refocus your attention on what matters. Right. Your marriage, your family, the kids in your home. Um, we the spend house you live in. The house the you live yeah, in. The How can you you're taking better or, your yep, home? Yep. Um, we spend a lot of time and energy. Again, you've alluded, you've said this previous, but we spend so much energy, um, focusing on the wrong things mm -hmm. and it robs us of happiness and joy. And so you miss out on the blessings in your own home when you're so focused on jealousy of another. Right. And it's quite, it's, it's, it's a shame because then everyone's getting not the best version of yourself. No, but what also it ends up doing too is it ends up putting you in this headspace of, um, just not being okay, being on defense, being angry, being, um, you know, just, just all the things that you are, you're just in a bad mood and that yeah. all leaks out into the family. They hear it, they see it, they feel it. Yeah. And that, it, that is just completely negative end of the spectrum that you probably want to be on. Yeah. And in, in coaching, we have a saying that is, it goes like this, where yeah. your attention goes, your energy flows. Whew, that is deep. 
Yeah. So if I'm if say my it attention say it again. Where my where your attention goes, your energy flows. So if I'm so my attention's on the X and my attention is on jealousy and my attention is on the the stress that the competition creates, then that's the energy I'm bringing right. forth is like a jealous, angry, like my energy is there. My energy isn't being given to my spouse. My right. energy has not been given to my children, my career, anything useful. All of my energy now is going towards what I'm paying the most attention to. Yeah. And that's draining. What is it? One more time. <laughs> Where your attention goes, your energy flows. Why are you <laughs> laughing? It just could be a Destiny's Child song. Or wait, what was okay. What's that song? Waterfalls? Don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> I feel like it like could have been on that album, too. Who was that? You know that TLC. Song. TLC, that's right. 90s. Didn't one of them die? Okay, left eye. But that's really sad. Let's not talk about that. Right eye's still good, though. Okay. Um, remember that they are an ex for a reason. So whenever you Gosh. get jealous of <laughs> the ex is like, um, if you're jealous of your spouse's ex or you're jealous of your ex, you know, remember like, mm, what they're do you an tell ex for a reason, What do you right? tell me all the time? Like, Oh uh, gosh, you're, I tell you a lot. What? <laughs> no, when it comes to like, you're arguing with your ex in your life, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, validation. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's it's good when you're, you know, we get really mad at exes and we get really upset in co-parenting. How can we not, right? And I always say that, like, you're an, they're an ex for a reason. Oil and fire is how I would describe me and my ex, right? It, it just, we have two personalities that could not cohabitate in any positive way. So what it is, though, is every time I have... A hard time it's like it's a validation that this was the right decision because yeah. I couldn't imagine my kids having to live with that 24 hours seven days a week like in the house like they would have been so toxic and so horrible and so bad for them and a really poor example of how to respect love and honor a spouse there was none of that so it's it's also validation that I am where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The kids are better off with two homes where they feel safe. Right. And, you know, have a better model, have better models of what a good marriage should be or a marriage that where you're having love, honor, respect for your spouse would look like, you know? Yep. So that's what I always say. We're like pee pee and boo boo. What? You me and, and me? My, me and my ex. You like say so you're like what oil and oil and fire. fire. Yeah, we're like pee pee and poo poo. I don't get it. One of us just the shit. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> look at the, the, the look on her face. Their eye roll. I got a close up on the eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm just kidding. That's just funny. <laughs> You've been waiting for that. Have I you have been waiting all episodes to all say episode, that? That's I was. Yes, I could I've tell. Been working on that one. <laughs> yeah. This whole time, huh? So dumb, yeah. <laughs> Um, so another way you can take on this and, and to re overcome it is to, f to start working on what's going on inside of you. Because if you want to fix jealousy, you got to fix your insecurities. Mm -hmm. You got to get right with whatever is broken in you because really the ex is doing nothing to you. The ex is just living their life and right. you have no control over what they say, how they say it, what they do, what they post how they raise the kids when the kids are like you have, you're so powerless with the ex and it affects you so much. And that's for a reason. So if you really have a hard time with jealousy or hard feelings, it would be super beneficial for you to get into therapy and figure out what is going on inside of me. What is calling, what is this insecurity that I'm having about my relationship with my kids or my marriage or what's happening. So is that any, is that something that you work on in <clears throat> coaching? Cause I feel like a little bit of like what you just, cause at first you started talking about that. And I'm then like, I said oh, therapy, that, right? Yeah. And then you said therapy and that well, threw me off. Therapy is more of a healing journey, right? So I have trauma that I have to heal from, or I have hurts that have to be healed. And, and that is a and therapy. And I don't understand why I hurt or what to do with this right. feeling. Why, and are, why am I feeling this way? How did I get here? 
Um, so therapy is really important for being able to heal and process trauma. And, you know, if you're having depression or mental disorders, um, mental health issues, therapy is your best bet. But coaching is just how do we get you unstuck? How do we move you forward? How do we get you your heart's desires. And what I do is I pull forth my client's truth. What do you really want? So maybe is I don't, uh, what I really want is to feel secure in my marriage. Then we can work with that. What does that look like? How do we get there? How can you show up so that you are doing that? But we don't go backwards and heal past yeah, that's trauma. something. Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it's a totally different. So it's like that's a fork in the road. Therapy and, yeah. is like the past, and coaching's kind of the future. Okay, like let's go somewhere different. Yeah, I know let's why not I'm here, the but dream. I want to be somewhere else now in yeah. the future. This is where I want to be. So if someone years. came to me and said, you know, I want to be a confident woman, mm-hmm. and I don't want to be jealous anymore. Cool. You got. This. Let's talk about how you can do things differently. Right. But if it's like, why am I, I, why am I so jealous? I don't know why I'm so jealous. I don't know, you know, I don't know how to overcome this jealousy. I don't know what I I need to explore my insecurities. That's more therapy. Does that make sense? Interesting. Yeah. So they could actually go hand in hand. You're not actually competing with therapists at all. No, I do something totally different than therapy. It's something that people. I think that if like, if, if people could afford it. If they had all the time and money, I mean, I think therapy and coaching is like the perfect marriage. You it's so well rounded because you get the you get the le- you get the you, you get, get it, you everything. Get the, this one end, you get this one. The one That's on each right. shoulder, yeah, okay, yeah. And sometimes to move forward, you have a healing journey to do. Right. Like if you're moving forward, but you haven't healed an old wound, it hinders that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like putting a band aid on it or a p- lipstick on a thinking, pig. I was thinking the same thing. I was just about to put. <laughs> Put a Band-Aid on you. Yeah. Oh, all right. <sighs> um, so if you have one thing you can do to, g- and like this is the last point that I have, and then we'll wrap up, but jealousy, that energy. Remember how I said where your attention goes, your energy flows? Yeah, and I started singing, <laughs> don't go, G. Yes. So a really quick way to, s- to redirect that energy from jealousy is exercise. Right. Oh yeah. Get your yeah. endorphins going. Release of dopamine. From what about eating? That Does t- eating help? N- it's not a healthy habit. Oh. Overeating. Oh. Is okay. it? So I wouldn't recommend that. But okay. you know, exercise is a really great way to to shift your energy into something productive. Prayer. Let's not forget the importance of releasing your hard feelings and your jealousy. I'm pretty and sure they call that God. the power of prayer. Yeah, That's it's important. Um. And then, you know, you could also have a creative outlet, painting, writing, um, you know, it's, it's a great Walking way. Walking the dog. That's not a creative outlet. Oh, well, it can be. Have you ever seen how our dog walks? <laughs> it's like flying a seagull. It's literally <laughs> like flying a seagull. <laughs> it's very true. I remember <laughs> yeah. our little black don't, and don't white. We have a little black and white chihuahua who's a little tiny thing. <laughs> and the first walk fat. we ever took him on. On a leash, he had no idea what to do. <laughs> and the leash, like we were walking, it was going like this, and every it was like flying a seagull. It was like, it was it was really like walking funny. a seagull. Yeah, it was yeah. the most insane thing. It was ever really, seen. really funny. Anyway, so that's, I hope that helped. If you guys have any more tips or tricks about how you deal with jealousy, um, I would love to know. Eric would love to know. I would to love know to know because too. Because yeah. what works for you the most? Out it's really, that. it's been just, it's learning from the past and just redirecting my own personal energy. And it's just a lot from within. I don't, I don't, I can't harness it. It's not one thing that I pinpointed. It's a lot of things that have happened over time. But it's like changing your mindset, uh, I feel. It, it's it like is, but my mindset's so different from where I was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. I'm like almost a different person now, you know, but it's because I've learned from, from things that have happened in my past. Now I've got plenty else I need to learn and other things I need to learn from. I'm not anywhere <laughs> near. <laughs> what's that big old I nodding of the head? I wasn't going to say anything, but. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's just, just there's kidding. always something to be working and on. And as someone who's older than and wiser than you, I will gladly, 
I will share my wisdom with you and thank you. I pre- I learn a lot from you. Yes, how to live my life and how not to live my life. <laughs> so, you guys don't just ever kidding. stop working on yourself and on your family mm-hmm. and just keep working on yourself. <laughs> just to get super deep there. <laughs> Like, really, though, like, if you don't ever give up on yourself, you know, and you're just, like, you're always looking to better. How do you better yourself, personally? Like, I'm I'm curious because I don't see you go, you don't read, you don't read, <laughs> period. <laughs> I mean, like, all, I was going to say self-help books, but then I'm like, you just don't no. read. You don't love to read. You don't really talk to friends, like, about... I- no, you know what? I'm I, like, what do you, you don't go to therapy. I, you don't get life coaching. So what are, you, are you saying I suck at life? <laughs> I'm asking what you do to work on yourself because I you know don't what I see do you to working make, on yourself. Honestly, I was talking I'm just to curious. someone about this the other day. I'm sorry, you guys. We we're trying to wrap this up, and now she's asking me questions. I'm curious. I learned from everyone else's mistakes. I have watched, I was talking to your mom about this. You work on yourself I was by talking being an observer? to your mom about this oh. when she was in church with us the other day, <laughs> watching Annabella drum lessons. Um, no, I really, I learn from everyone else's mistakes. I see why people get mad at someone else. I see what someone does that hurts someone else. I see, I watch consequences, actions and consequences, and I learn from them. And they're not only my own, you know, like, uh, do you learn from the consequences you face from me? <laughs> no, see that. No, I, I because still you keep have to making work, the same. I mistakes. still have I'm to work kidding. on things in life. I'm not perfect. No. no, but that's interesting that you are that observant and that interested in learning. That's something I don't that, know about you. That that's is really something cool. that has helped me, and you that's do neat. know because I do know. You do. I'm all that knowing. is something that has helped me on my current business venture that is something that has helped me grow my business so bigly so bigly <laughs> <laughs> uh, i know someone else who's used that word before uh, now i see how that word gets used I, that's not even a word in my vocabulary and it's just it's how it comes out <laughs> comes out bigly <laughs> did, didn't trump use that in, in the speech at one point in time <laughs> Anyways, it is something that has helped me so much in business because that's where the word, that's where the B came from. <laughs> so much in business is learning from what other people's in other people in my business, my competition, I have learned from messed up. I have learned yeah. from their mistakes tenfold and it has helped me by knowing things and hearing things and I listen to my clients and I listen to my customers and I and I learn from everyone else's downfalls and everyone else's mistakes. What can I do different? How can I be different from that person? And that has helped me grow my business so bigly over the last few years. But that just really speaks to the kind of man you are. That. Anyways, enough with the fluff session. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Sorry my, for our goofiness. My Bye. bigly husband. I'm just going to call you. Thanks Mr. For Bigly. <laughs> Mr. Bigly. Mr. I love Bigly, some Bigly. Wiggly. I love some Bigly Chew. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you guys. Oh, sorry yeah. for us tonight. We had a lot of food before we <laughs> got in here and I had a little nap. <laughs> so if you guys like this, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Ring the notification bell. I feel like we don't talk about this anymore. We don't. We got a Patreon account. We got a Buy Me a Coffee account. You can help support us and the support just helps support you guys. We're going to keep this podcast going. Whether you support us or not, we just appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, so thanks, guys. Thank you guys for being here, and we'll see you on the next one. Love you bigly. <laughs>